Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing a review of the very anticipated Zoologist Bee. Literally just came out. I've got this tiny little sample here I got with a, another bottle order. Um, first things first, do not blind buy. I'm gonna put that out there right now. There's gonna be a lot of people saying go ahead and blind buy. I would not necessarily say that. However, it is um, very good. Uh, it literally just came out. So I'm still feeling it out. I've worn it once already and it's, it's a honey gourmand. And you know, some people are kind of putting the spin that this is like a very masculine zoologist. I don't really understand um, what, what's masculine about a honey gourmand. I would love to hear uh, the fragrance community tell me what's so masculine about that. Not saying it's um, bad, it's of course very good, but this is definitely unisex, this is leaning feminine. Um, absolutely, I don't know what people are talking about saying this is masculine, this is honey, uh, this is tonka, this is flowers, um, a little bit of citrus. I think like the one maybe grounding masculine ingredient here is sandalwood and that's not even really masculine. Anyways, the notes are orange ginger syrup, royal jelly cord at the top, heart notes, broom, not <laughs> a sweeping broom, it's like a flower broom, heliotrope, mimosa, orange flower. Base notes, benzoin, labdanum, musk, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, but you could read that on Fragrana, Fragrantica. And I was just giving that to you. Anyways, um, right away, you're, you're getting that honey, and it's a very authentic honey, um, giving credit to where it's due. It's really good honey. If you've tried kind of the more artificial honeys, like you get in something Killian back to black, um, where it's kind of this artificially cloying note. This is very natural. I mean, it really smells like you're smelling the honeycomb. And I think the animalic must come in there. It's not super animalic, but there's some must in there, as with all zoologists in that DNA. That's the zoologist DNA. So it kind of makes it feel more like a, a raw honeycomb rather than just mm, delicious honey, like just scooping it out. Um, there's some flowers in here, um, labdanum, just other little heliotrope, things like that. So you get that floral, and I guess that ties in with the bee buzzing around. You know, that's what you would expect. I, th there's a little bit of citrus, um, a tiny little bit of orange. I think that was really nice. It kind of puts a little tartness in the sweetness, but this is overall very sweet. This is a gourmand all the way. I would recommend this more to females than males. Um, time of year, you could really wear this you could wear this any time of year because I feel it's light enough where in the spring and summer it would not be cloying, but it's also has the notes that you would kind of get in the winter, those kind of heavier, sweet honey notes. I will say though, the honey is more airy. It's not a thick, dense honey. If you've tried Montal Honey Oud, you know that's a thick honey, man. That will gas out 2,000 square feet in a couple minutes, like straight up, whereas this, it's kind of, it has a presence, but it's also airy. So it's not just gonna like choke you out with it. But it's, um, the projection is good, longevity is good. So it's good performance for a zoologist. Most of zoologists are, because they're either otoparfum or extrate. Um, I would not buy a bottle of this because it is $195. I would if it was $145. I guess this is, you know, the, the special editions along with T-Rex. So I don't know if these are more limited batch, more rare ingredients. Um, man, this would be so worth it for $145. I can't do it for $195. Um, and I wish I could. And if Victor, you're watching this video, I, I really would if it was a little cheaper. But it's it's just, you know... It's great, but it's not something that's strikingly unique within the zoologist line. There's some incredibly unique scents in the zoologist line. And this is something where um, there's inspirations of things you've smelled before. Um, you know, I've smelled honey fragrances before. This is a great take on it um, with kind of the airiness and the floral and a little bit of citrus in there. I think it's a great take, but it's not something like, oh, I've just never had this before. Um, a lot of people are probably gonna tout this as a revolutionary zoologist. I wouldn't say that. I would say it's a great release. Um, but no, this isn't like just something crazy out there. Um, I think squid was something really interesting and crazy out there. Um, but this is something mass appealing. This is like chameleon easy. You could, I mean, th and that's the thing is with zoologists, so many of their fragrances are just like, wow, what is that? Like um, I've got a bottle of Rhino I'm gonna be doing a review on and Hummingbird. Um, people will still like this. It is absolutely mass appealing. People aren't gonna be like, what is, I've never smelled something like that. You know, some kind of, you know, untrained noses might just pick up the floor on the honey and say, oh, that's very nice. They're not gonna realize there's a lot of zoologist complexity in here, um, but that honey up top, and then Tonka. Tonka, like, 
Uh, I, I'm looking at the Fragranica right now and people are saying like Tonka comes like fourth or fifth is the most apparent note. You can smell the Tonka right away. Like right away. I am blown away that people are picking up other notes before the Tonka. And Tonka is such a commonly used um, note now. That's kind of something that also turns me off is it's like, man, you can get Tonka. There's Tonka in so many fragrances. Like I kind of wish um, in this fragrance uh, such a common note wasn't so present. I was hoping, I don't know, maybe I'm just biased against Tonka. I mean, I understand it, it kind of sweetens the raw honey aspect of it, so it gives the honey some of that, some sweetness that it might need if it's kind of that more authentic raw honey. But I don't know, it's just, Tonka's just one of those, you you see it a lot, and it's, I don't know, zoologists, I love zoologists because they bring in these really strange ingredients, and Tonka is not strange to me. Um, but I, I, I think it's good. I would pick up a 10 mil. I think I would pick up a 10 mil for what's gonna be like $55 or something. And that's good, yeah, that's good enough. That's all I'd probably need with it. I wouldn't be wearing this super often because I, I prefer more um, masculine grounded fragrances. And people would be like, oh, this is the new zoologist masculine banger. It, it's not, it's, it's a honey gourmand. Please people, like, <laughs> come on. But, um, I, I, for anyone who's interested in zoologists and you haven't tried zoologists, this would be a super easy one to get into it with. That and chameleon. Um, some people say squid is very approachable. I wouldn't necessarily say that, but zoo um, bee and chameleon are super easy wares. Um, and for a lot of you out there, this is probably exactly what you want because you don't want something really challenging. I guess I'm just kind of a niche snob. Um, Definitely something to look out for. Definitely something to sample. Do not blind buy a $195 bottle, people. Let's be reasonable. I'm telling you it's good, but I'm also telling you um, to someone who's smelled a lot of fragrances, this might not necessarily blow your socks off because th there are things in this that you have seen before. It's not going to shock you. Um, but maybe some people don't want to be shocked, and I can see this being a very successful fragrance. Anyways, until next time, guys. Thank you.